So this week has been my vacation week, and it's been it's been a lot of fun. Um, a lot of time just spent at home, uh, which is a vacation for me, just to have time to not really have anything that I have to do. That's how I enjoy spending vacations, and it's economical. Um, so what did I do while at home? Well, I did some things, but the things that are pertinent to this video are uh, game related, and I played, I think, six games so far this week. The first was um, a game of innovation I played with my wife. It was a lot of fun. And it, um, one of the things, I've been in a slump in terms of how well uh, the game's been telling me I've been doing in our in our plays with her. A little bit of background, um, it's the game that, it's kind of our game of choice. It's the game that she wants to play when we play together. It's the game we usually play together when we play a game together. We, so I play a lot of innovation with my wife one-on-one. -on -one. And, um... I like the game because um, I should actually show you the game I'm talking about. Uh, we play both the expansion and the regular together. By the way, if you um, have the expansion or if you're thinking about it, uh, check out the um, new setup rules. So the setup rules that come with this expansion are not very good setup rules. There are better setup rules that are, make it so much easier and actually, I think, improve play a little bit. Where instead of pulling out so many of one, the expansion and so many of the base set and mixing it together. Uh, I think mixing it together is how you used to do it. You have them in separate decks and there's just conditions from which you draw one or the other and that is so much better to so do that. Um, so what I was saying is we play it a lot and lately she's been destroying me because generally what I like to do in the game is just sort of explore the combinations because I think that's that's what is particularly enjoyable about that game for me. Um, and, you know, just again and again, she's been beating me. So the last time we played, I was able to explore, but the game, uh, I got I got a payoff from it in terms of what the game was telling me and that I won the game. And so that that was heartening because one thing, one thing I always kind of wrestle with is whether um, when a game allows you to explore or allows you to get pleasure in ways other than uh, through the point system, right? Whether that's a good thing or not. Whether if you if the if you if exploring the subject matter of the game is in spite of um, the game's reward structure, whether that's a positive or a negative to to have to kind of go against what the what you feel like doing, you know, to have to kind of arrest that that emotional track with a more like commanding mental fist. Um, but anyway, so this case that wasn't the case. So that, that that I don't know, just an observation about that game. It was a pretty low key game. Um, then I had some a friend and came over. This was I had I had three kind of scheduled game things in a row. The first was a friend's parents were visiting, and um, I decided we would play Europa 1945-2030 right here. A game I really enjoy. Um, I, I want to review this sometime. There's a, it, it's it's a special game. Um, got I, I didn't front load it enough. I think the negotiating, and I got some people kind of mad at me. I think afterwards or in the course of the negotiating tactics, because you know I feel like that's that's where the competition space is is in the negotiating. Sure, there's also the like calculating where to put your guys and everything, but it's really about talking about talking and so I, I played it as a political game and I don't know um, I think some people maybe thought it shouldn't be not the majority though the majority didn't seem upset with me but uh, one or two people kind of got upset with me in that. Um, which I think is okay I, I think part of partly is maybe because I have a different view of games maybe than some um, you know I feel like if you go to a movie, it's not always supposed to be about feeling good. It's either supposed to be some some conflict, oftentimes, or some sort of drama, or you're supposed to feel different things. And so I feel like that's okay with the game. Um, but I can see how it's different uh, because you know this is this, it's involving people. Um, but anyway, I still think it was a good experience. I I got to introduce the game to some people who would probably never play it. Probably most a lot of people probably haven't heard of this game. Um, and I'd, I'd still recommend it, and I'm glad it, it occurred. Uh, so that that was 
that one. And then the next day we played, um, and I loaned the book out so I don't have it anymore. Next day I had a couple over to play with my wife and I. We played How We Came to Live Here, and they printed out some character sheets for me. Um, spent the whole time, How We Came to Live Here is a story game, that, which means it's a, kind of like a role, it's a sort of role playing game that's, that's more narratively focused rather than focused on simulation like some games, like uh, GURPS maybe. I have a lot of GURPS books, or um, like or about personal power, uh, which is maybe what D&D is about, and D&D is more kind of like a video game. Um, so this is more about constructing a story, and how we came to live here, stories of the fifth world, how we came to live here, stories of the fifth world, I'm getting that name right, is a game about, um, about this very specific place, and it's this uh, mythologized, like, Southwest American native culture, uh, kind of uh, village culture. Um, and it's, pre it's pretty interesting how they construct it, because the, um, the structure of the play actually mirrors the society that you are playing in. So it's, like, it's, you're the people, right? You're, you're, and they think of themselves as the people. And there's other humans out there, but they're just outsiders, and they are not people. They are something else. Um, and the kind of traditional game master role is broken up between everyone, but primarily between two players, the inside player and the outside player, which mirror the inside chief and the outside chief of the village. So the inside chief deals with village politics and things going on in the village, and the outside chief deals with external threats. Um, so there's that, which kind of, which is interesting, that the, the structure of how you play the game mirrors the society itself, and then the other the other two players are, are hero characters. Um, and along with that, the beliefs of the society have this very tangible effect. So if you do something that's against the society, if your character does, there will be this, um, this very physical corruption that can affect you in this very deliberate way uh, in the game, which, you know, if I, I, I used this example when I was playing with the people. Um, if I jaywalk, which I do all the time, not all the time, but frequently, um, please don't get me in trouble, I never, I don't feel like I get any sort of tangible corruption or anything like that. Um, so that's kind of interesting. Also, the, the gender roles are very explicit. Um, so there's, it's just like, it's a, a lot of role playing is done in these very specific tropes that we kind of are familiar with, often it's fantasy stuff or science fiction stuff or whatever, there's all these. This is a very, this is a very different culture than, um, than any of us are really used to, any of us who are playing, so it's, it's a different way of thinking and so specific. Uh, very good. I've, I have two kind of um, story games I'm excited about, that one and Shock, uh, which I'm not going to talk about right now because I haven't played it yet, um, but that's very general. Um, and I just, I just like that specificity and how it all works. So we spent the whole night just creating creating the, the village and creating the characters. And people put way more into it than the book recommended. But that ended up being the whole night was just um, creating. And we look forward to playing again. And we finished the night with Dixit. Um, right here. Good game. I've always liked Dixit. Uh, I find when I drink, I don't... It doesn't flow as well for me, and I was, uh, I did have a bit of vodka uh, that night, so that didn't flow as well, but it's still an enjoyable game. Um, one of the people I was playing with suggested we we have a, a dummy card get put down, and we put down a rabbit for that dummy card. The dummy card lost, which I think, um, if you think that you can just put down something randomly and still win the game, I think that was kind of a proof that that wasn't the case, though the dummy it, maybe that's not a total proof because the dummy player didn't get ever chance get ever get a chance to be the storyteller. Um, so if you don't understand Dixon, I'm not going to go into that. So how we became? I'm going to just show you some of the bits of what they came up with. It's not going to how we came to live here. I don't know what it's going to. There's character sheets filled out, and they're scattering everywhere. I'm on a little stool. Here's the village web. There's a village like a social web, which is fun. Um, just about the relationships with people. And that's kind of part of the process. And then they, you know, write bits about who's in the village. And I, I just really enjoy that collaborative um, creation process. 
and I, I liked that. Um, some people, like my wife, she'd never done anything like that before. She really got really got into it, and that was cool to see. So that was, um, and then today, my nephew came to visit with my sister, and he he recently got a copy of Small World Underground, which I played a lot of Small World back in the day. Um, part of what got me kicked on on the kick of this this uh, contain game thing, you see all these games here, is I had a gift certificate to Barnes and Nobles, and I never buy anything new. You know, it's just a a thing of mine. I just I don't I I won't go into that, but um. So I like oh, I'm gonna get Barnes and Noble, and I I saw Small World there, and I bought it uh, with the gift card, and so I I really enjoyed it and played a lot. I don't really play it anymore, too much I think. I, but whenever I play it, there's you know kind of memory kicks in, and yeah, it was, it was fun. Um, the game is pretty similar to Small World. There's some some cool little additions that give it a little bit more maybe randomness. Um, there's some more, a little more complexity. Uh, I loaned my small role to my, my nephew because he has this thing that can connect them. And we surmised that maybe you could play ten players. Um, and he does a thing that actually I, you know how I, some of you who watch my videos know I do the Real People Multigame Solitaire Mega Tournament. He does something kind of similar with um, Pokemon cards and with other games. Um, but he doesn't really have the players have personality so much. But he gives them names, and then he has them all play, and he plays solitaire like that. So I wonder if he won't do that with a big combined game of Small World with all the expansions and Small World Underground. So that's good for him. Uh, fun game. Um, then we played Crusoe's Planet, which was great. It, we played Capitalist, Tribal Capitalist. Um, it was my sister and my nephew and my wife's so all of their first time playing. And it was very cooperative, um, partially because there was a surplus. We just had more than enough goods, so the the kind of darker sides of capitalism didn't really kick in. And we also, so there was like kind of two reasons for our success, I think. Because in my, my real people games with it, it wasn't, well, it was, some people were successful, but usually it was like one out of six people or, you know, you know not the whole group. We we all won, you know. I ended up with like twenty six points or something, which is, which is all right. Um, but there was this kind of culture, culture element that kicked in where the the system didn't, you know. So systems can kind of make people act or have to behave in a certain way. Um, so like the the socialist system in Crusoe's Planet, you kind of have to act towards the common good because everyone's going to vote then vote on who gets what right whereas the capitalist system you don't necessarily have to and I actually played kind of a selfish role in it I took a a track where the spider track seems like it can just kind of provide for itself and you know I got good enough roles that I had enough of a surplus and no one was really a hard bargainer um, everyone had positive scores uh, we made sure we fed the person who was getting the radio signals enough and it was just so that you know this the system allowed for our our culture to to work you know we were all kind of had goodwill towards each other and so we were, it was a success and it was a lot of fun um and i think i think my nephew understood what capitalism was more which is one of the reasons my sister went into or she thought it would be good for him to play because sometimes he asks like what's communism what's capitalism well crusoe's planet it can help you understand that and even if you have some sort of grasp on it, I think the game can help you understand it a little bit more because there's a lot of experiential stuff in there. That's that's really great. And so that was that was that was the gaming that happened in my house this week.